Last week I told you I wanted to do a show about space exploration and this would be it. And with No Man's Sky being such a big hit and a big hit, what better opportunity than to talk about this subject right at this moment. Space exploration. What does that mean? Is it just going around different star systems looking at things? In a sense, yes, but not really to its fullest. I've played a bunch of space games. I, I cannot claim to have played them all, like not even close. Haven't played Nexus, haven't played Star Lancer, haven't played Free Space. I know you're gonna strangle me because of that. Haven't played Independence War though, that's a bit more shooty make shooty shooty than exploring space things. There are a bunch I have not had the chance to play. But from the ones that I have played, there seems to be a certain common theme. Namely, a lot of them don't actually do space exploration well. Take for example, the new darling of the gaming industry and punching bag. Oh sweet punching bag, please bring in the clicks. No Man's Sky. Does this game do space exploration well? Not really. Why, you may ask? Because you seldom get the sense that you're exploring something that no one else has ever seen. Mostly because you actually see a bajillion amount of spaceships running about when you land on a planet. You see wreckage, you see ports, you see colonies, well, many outposts, you see space stations in just about every system. Well, yeah, but those are alien, so you're still exploring them for the first time as a no spoilers here. And you do get to meet alien civilizations and learn one word from them slowly and all the while you just grind materials again and again and again and again and uh, holy shit this is boring as hell. And exploration shouldn't be boring. Exploration should be exciting. Exploration should be fun. Exploration should be rewarding. And exploration in No Man's Sky is finding the bajillionth monolith, following the path of Atlas. It's really not all that cracked up to be. Whereas in a game like Elite Dangerous, it's still crap. Like, exploration in Elite Dangerous is still goddamn crap. Yeah, I know, you have the entire galaxy at your disposal. And you go slowly through systems and systems, jumping from one place to another depending on how much fuel your ship can use, what's your jump distance, and, th and then you get to something like a black hole. You actually see for the first time in your life a black hole and you wonder, oh my god, this, th this is amazing, this... Look at what I've discovered. And there's 50 ships running around that black hole like it's nothing. And one of them shoots at you and bam, your ship explodes and all your exploration data vanishes. So you can't even make money off that. Like, there's no point in actually trying to do exploration in Elite Dangerous because odds are you will die along the way before you actually find something that's gonna be valuable enough to keep you going. You may as well just grind materials until you get enough money to get a ship that can jump even farther and then you go grind more materials. Exploration itself seems like an afterthought in that game and it's, it's quite sad. Especially when it travels so, so far away only to find out that, oh yeah, th this system is actually inhabited. The same can be said about the X series. I, I love the X series. The X series was my go-to space sim for over a decade. The sense of exploration was limited because all, and I mean all exploration could only be done in systems that were already inhabited. I mean you could only travel through those giant gates. You didn't have FTL, you didn't have the ability to just travel all over the place with your ship. You needed a jump gate and a jump drive to get from one place to another and you couldn't have a gate in a system that wasn't already populated. Unless you were a certain Teladi system which I may have actually utterly destroyed with my M2, which was an Argon Titan. Not really sure why I decided to commit genocide on that entire system. Maybe because the Taladi just pissed me off one day. Maybe I just decided, hey, I'm gonna drive my gigantic M2 into the system 
and just steamroll over every ship and then if they get pissy I'm just gonna nuke the entire place and I did. I even tried to nuke the gates but <laughs> Funny thing, those gates are really hard to blow up. But back to the idea, there is no actual exploration in the X series. Unless maybe you count going after the Xenon systems which aren't that well known because they're filled with Xenon or the Cock Dimension. You, you do have, well yeah, you do have the ability to jump in the story to a system controlled by the Cock. But that only happens once when you have a certain center, I believe. Yet yeah, Asher gave me a free ship for that mission. You could even hold a little discoverer inside it. But again, not so much a game about space exploration. Though it is a much better game in terms of economy than Elite Dangerous because you can actually build your own ships, you can control more than one ship, you can do a lot of stuff in that game. So what games did actually provide good space exploration? Well, one of them I've already talked talked about. It's the beloved Star Control 2. Now why does this game do space exploration well? Firstly, when you get to someplace new, you actually have a use for it. You're collecting resources from it, but not in a way that's mind-numbingly boring. You actually have an action scene with driving around the surface of the planet with your rover, dodging animals, dodging lightning and earthquakes. It's a fun a little thing. But more importantly, in this game you actually make contact with other races. Other alien races that you, up until this point, had no idea about. Unless you asked the guy in the space station around Earth, or you found one of the aliens that's gonna sell you just about anything you wanted to know about the other races. Exploration in that game actually feels like you're finding new things because you are. You are constantly finding new resources, you're finding new potential allies, you're finding new enemies, you are finding new technology that's needed to actually accomplish your quest, you are finding ancient artifacts, you are taking part in an experience that's enjoyable. Like going to a new star actually gives you a sense of excitement because, well, when you first played, I mean, you don't know what you could find there. You could come upon a race that's as funny as those Spotty and Fwifo, whom I believe you can threaten with a vegetable. You could accidentally run across the home world of your arch enemies. You could find a place where all those blasted probes are coming from. You could find a rainbow world that points the way to the center of the... G Wait a minute. No Man's Sky, did, did you get the idea from here? Well, Sport too, but from here, never mind that. Exploration is fun because there is a sense of anticipation, not just a sense of, oh, look, uh, another planet, let's uh, get about. Oh, 10 loads of plutonium, some gold, some minerals and something and maybe I'll find something to craft a uh, another inventory slot. I know you can't craft inventory slots, it's a figure of speech. And Star Control isn't the only game to have such an approach to exploration. FTL does too. Every system that you visit is something new, something that can bring you great joy, great peril, it can give you something that you didn't have before or take it away. There's a sense of risk and also reward. There's not really that much monotony, whereas in Elite it's boring as shit, in No Man's Sky it's repetitive as crap and that goes about for every other game apart from one other. Now this game takes an entirely different approach to space exploration. Whereas in every other game getting to another star, to another planet is the easiest thing possible. And this one it isn't. And this one the act of actually exploring is the challenge. The act of actually getting your ship there is the reward. And that game is Kerbal Space Program. Exploration in this game is done for its own merit. It is the objective. You don't go exploring because you're gonna get some reward that will let you do something other than exploring. No. It will just let you do more exploring because you will get uh, science, you will get information that lets 
you then construct, well, lets you research new equipment. It could get you money even because you put a payload in the orbit of the moon or something. But exploration itself, actually getting to moon, getting to, I forgot what the other plans were called, getting there, that's the hard part. That's the rewarding part. That is the game. There's no aliens, there's no material grind, there's no story about getting to the center of the galaxy to unravel the mysteries of well, no spoilers there is just exploration for the sake of it and it works it works because ac actually even getting out of Kerbin's orbit is in itself a feat actually building a ship that's able to cross the distance between Kerbin and moon and land there without exploding is an achievement getting it back that in itself will make you feel like you're a goddamn hero. Which is something Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky have not done, at least for me. The act of flying a ship in Kerbal Space Program to go somewhere, to see something, to plant a tiny little flag, that gives a sense of accomplishment that's not found even in star control which is why i would say that if you're in the market for a game about space exploration there is no point in taking a game that's about generating a bajillion infinite worlds like star made or no man's sky get a game that only has a few planets to explore but doesn't trivialize the act of getting there doesn't treat it like an afterthought doesn't just give you a bunch of random crap to mine through. Give Kerbal Space Program a go. You will not regret it. The Kerbals might. You will probably kill a lot of them. Oh, those poor Kerbals. Now, if you know other space exploration games that give you that sense of achievement, of accomplishment, when you actually explore the universe, please let me know in the comments because I may try and check them out in future shows. If you enjoyed this show, hit the like button, subscribe and share it with your friends. Or, if you thought it was horrible, then share it with your enemies and make them suffer. We shall be your weapon of vengeance. But if you liked what you saw, you could, I don't know, maybe donate because basically YouTube is horrible at revenue by using the link in the description or just buy my book. It's a fantasy book about, well, a lot of stuff. I guarantee it won't suck, and if it does suck, you can find me here and complain about it.